All right, guys. So me and M40, we went through and we uh, we played the X Defiant server beta. We went ahead and we engineered a podcast. We're going to be doing another one here right before the release. Full release is the 25th, and the preseason starts the 21st. So I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you there. Uh, the problem is with Call of Duty is that they don't, they don't wow. listen. They don't yeah. listen to what the community wants. They're they just too... they never really listen to the community. Yeah, they're too caught up. Uh, ever in pain, ever since fucking like I remember Black Ops One, like like everyone like had a complaint about the FAMAS and how overpowered it was, and they didn't fucking change oh, that until like the suck. end of the game. Oh, Trip, you got it all like, wrong. Oh no, nah, man, we're gonna go hang out at the mall, and I'm f fucking flying across country for that. <laughs> and I'm gonna suck his dick. Yeah, like, you better be. It'd make me feel better about the $400 fucking plane ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my opinion on it. I think it's got a lot of potential. I think it's going to be great. I think it's got to see. If they, they do the right things with it, it could really work out. But it also, I'm worried that they're just going to just take the easy route with it, too, in a little bit. Like, I think that's the only thing that worries me, truthfully. I, I think that they have, a, they have like, a, a script, it seems like, they like which way they're trying to go with it. And I just hope that it works, because... It seems like it, it could, but Call of Duty is real spiteful and Microsoft's real spiteful too, so you never know if they start doing too much shit that replicates Call of Duty or you know, maybe there's interference or something. And then this whole thing with X Defiant can't be a, uh, a thing that goes forward. But honestly, I think it's just like me, like not even getting into that detail. I think it's got potential too, too, like honestly. I definitely think there's gonna be a niche profile. I think you're right on that. So, like, no matter what, there'll be people that'll play it, even if it's the people that are just against Call of Duty, no matter what it is. You know what I'm saying? I think you're completely right on that, and I think it's got a lot of opportunity. It may not be top of the charts, but I think when things get stale, and especially their timing is particularly kind of interesting to me. Like, MW2 was, you know, all right. 2019 was kind of all right if they could have applauded it to place that game at the worst time of cod it's like cold war was really good people enjoyed a lot of that they played a lot of cold war they didn't really play a whole lot of those uh modern warfare they didn't play a whole lot of that at all it's like if they would have plotted it in them time frames if gulf war say welch's doesn't become a very good game they might have a huge opportunity for that right there and be able to captivate the fan base from going, well, MW3 is stale, Gold 4 sucks, fuck this, we're going to play, you know, and they're, and they're fucking on X to fight. That's what they spend their time playing until the next COD comes out that's semi decent or not. I think there's a huge market for that potential. I can't even guarantee, but I think there's a huge market for that potential. I just also think it's going to have a factor. You got to factor in how much hype has gone behind X Defiant for like the last year and a half, almost two full years at this point. I mean, they got to stop teasing so much too and just kind of let it, let it be known what it's going to be. Like at this point, we are all into it to a certain level. You know, everyone's looking for final release. And it's at the point where it's like, how much teasing are you guys going to do before we actually are able to get the full-fledged experience to know what the final copy is? Like, we, we know it was almost fully ready to be played about a year ago, and then things had to get, you know, I know there was issues with Microsoft, and they switched, I think it's developers or something along the lines where it was, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Ace was speaking upon it. During Zuma's uh, the flag, I don't know exactly what he said, but there were issues that were behind the scenes that weren't being, you know, necessarily publicly discussed, uh -huh. and it was kind of just not really anything people could get any intel on. It's like, all right, we're gonna release this game. This is the date. Expect it this day, and if if anything if anything changes, we're gonna be right there to tell you guys. Because it's like. At this point, they are establishing a fan base. They are establishing a following. They are getting content creators actively involved, smaller streamers actively involved. It is creating opportunity and networking. There's so much. There is so much from this game when it comes to the potential aspect of it that 
they do have a lot of pressure on their shoulders too with the competitive aspect of things with you know Fortnite still being relevant Apex still to a certain level and degree maintaining viewership and i know it sounds kind of crazy but like dude valorant a lot csgo like these yeah. games are mainstream huge platform based games that they've got to factor in like yo we can't just keep teasing because yeah. there's only so much teasing we can do before you know hey look hey golf Ward gets released or perfect example oh, look, new fortnite dude. and then now we're getting pushed back on the back burner they don't want that they need to be a topic of discussion in the beginning and it needs to be an all gas no breaks mentality because it isn't like they're the new game. Yeah, you're the new game for right now. But the teasing aspect of it is the only thing I think that's going to kill them. Yes, it builds up hype. Yes, it brings up a lot of conversation. It makes them relevant. I don't know if that's what they're looking for. I don't think that's really what they're fishing for. But personally speaking, I'm just tired of talking about them fucking releasing the game. I just want to be able to play the full version of it. I want to get into a competitive environment to see what it's like competitively with a rank aspect of things and i could see a lot of players you know relating to that i think it's like it's what they call duty you know when they say oh we're releasing season three or season four and then we get that day where you know it's supposed to be released but now it's backed up four to six hours because of an issue and it's like that isn't a bad thing that's a good thing and a bad thing you could look at every bad thing and you know only look at it as a negative but you could also take the positives with it it gets the people talking it gets viewership it gets the attention of you know the community the bad thing is is then all of the bullshit stems from oh well they're they're, they're this they're that they're, there's no consistency they say this they, i don't yeah, know i don't think as a fan cool. being optimistic i think x Defiant just needs to fucking run it they need to release it let it go and they can make the fixes they can make the changes they can make the adjustments i just think that they have to trust and believe in their product and i think it could go really far truthfully yeah yeah, fair enough. Hey, that's actually a good point. Just, just push it. it. Just do it. You know, don't don't yeah, sit stop and... holding back. You know, yeah. like, let's just pull the trigger at this point. Well, Ashes of Creation's a big game that's had that issue here recently. I mean, you always got to gotta think too. On top of all of it, you know, these people that are making the calls on whether or not to drop the game, whether or not to postpone it, they also probably have ideas of other developers making other games right now that they want to try to beat out or determining whether or not to like drop after that or drop before that. I feel like there's so many variables that we don't know about whenever it comes to dropping a game that just go right over our head, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Amen to that too. So we're not fucking devs. But <laughs> I will say that devs. with the with the way that it performed, just this beta because I didn't play the other two. Uh, I had more fun on that than I did Call of Duty, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge yeah, thing. Yeah, I could really... being measured against is being called the COD killer and all. I mean, that's a huge thing. So, like, they, they really do have a, a, a big shoe to fill and a big fucking ledge to, to live up to. And I think I did, too. So, I don't know what it was about it. I might be just glutton for punishment. I don't know. But I found myself, I just couldn't help but trying to play it. It was fun. It really was. It didn't feel absorbently defeating. It got frustrating, certainly. But what was frustrating yeah. about it was what I expected from what it was in its state. Now, and you, you a year or two most, years down the road, beta, right? I sniped the entire beta. I think I yeah. used in a different weapon for like 30 seconds. I swear to God. Facts. So, all of it sniped. With both. The, uh, the what was it, AS50 or whatever, and then the M44. Both of them. TAC-50 and TAC the 50, M44. Yeah, I used Attack 50 pretty much most of it. Oh man, the fucking servers were lucky. The M44 wasn't hitting one shots for <laughs> for me. Did you try the uh, Chrome destroy. Line Barrel? I thought that's yeah. Really I put everything damage on it because regardless of how much damage you put on the M44, it's still zoomed in quicker than Attack 50. Mm -hmm. But uh, if uh, I I ran Attack 50 for a while with just the original 12x scope, and I was literally Dude, nerfing it's... myself it's it's it, the variable gives you so much more zoom in ads team uh ads time it's yeah it's, it's something bro i liked it because it had that like i don't know to me i enjoyed the old fucking msr from modern warfare 3 and that's mm -hmm. kind of the vibe i got from that 
So I was like, yeah, all right, we're running it. Because, like, in MW3 right now, my big favorite is the fucking XMR or whatever, the Victus. It's the remake of the fucking Victus now. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Yeah, even the Victus in MW2. That was my favorite gun. I don't know why. I like those big bolt fuckers, man. A little slow. You know, they're a little hard to master. Kind of like the DSR. You know, DSR, post-patch, everybody was so mad about it. And I was like, what are you guys mad about? Do like, you realize how fucking crazy it is to hit a clip now? Like, I'm kind of okay with it. Don't get me wrong, I was a little fucking mad, but, like, once I got the hang of it, dude, there was, I'm a glutton for punishment, I think. I don't know, I'm telling you. Because I enjoyed reload canceling that motherfucker for a clip. That shit was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Put the extended mag on, and somehow that shit was faster. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, you just touch the mag and sprint out of it, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, DSR is the shit still. Like, and that it gives me that old bolt feel. It definitely gave me that old bolt feel. It was slow as shit. Oh my god, it was slow. But I went from uh, the 8X, and then I used that for fucking like six hours. Because I played, I think it was 25 hours on beta. I did like six hours with that 8X scope, and then I went to the stock scope. And like you'll watch the gameplay where I went. With the 8X, it was okay. And the second I swapped and I went to that stock scope, dude, I was bagging kids. It was crazy. Hmm. And it, it's just my brain, you know what I mean? When you do something that's kind of harder or fucking different, then you go to the normal. Your brain's already adjusted. But I enjoyed it, man. I really did. It wasn't the same. Absolutely wasn't the same as the M44, and I think the M44 will be the Clip Goblin for sure. But that I, I think something about that, that fucking yeah, Cat 50. Yeah, but at the same time, nice. I was having an issue with the reloading aspect of the gun. It took way too long to reload. Uh that that's that's very hindering mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna hold you on that yeah you put like your that. bullets in fucking skin so yeah it took a while <laughs> the attack 50 i mean it just reloaded so much quicker even an extended mag reloaded quicker i mean yeah eight bullets in that thing that was that was murder yeah i think it was fucking crazy not having to worry about the skill-based matchmaking was a big thing too i mean yeah it was it felt really weird like i felt like i was playing bots like 80 percent of the time yeah yeah fair enough there was a lot of fucking bot bot play part of it for sure people don't know the game yet but there is right. you can definitely well, tell there's a well, difference well maybe I, I, would I play don't know. maybe some time. people got the movement some people didn't you know mm -hmm. uh i still feel like the movement in the game i, I really like it uh i i hope Man, I really hope they don't touch it, but they're going to touch it. I know they're going to touch the movement. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's crazy how the movement's nice. And, you know, people always talk to it. Like, before I even played the beta, I thought X Defiant moved faster than, like, Call of Duty. But Call of Duty still moves faster than X Defiant. Yeah, I like the movement. I felt like it could have gotten fixed a little bit. So the, the biggest problem I had wasn't even movement. Like, it wasn't movement-based. It felt movement-based, but it was the fucking decent. It was something with the servers or something about the game. Uh, when you, you get shot around corners, or it just felt like you you weren't moving, you know, and you'd die. So uh, I kind of blamed the movement for that at first. Um, and then just through more research and shit and listening to other people that are a little bit more informed than even I am about what the fuck things mean, it's it's a desync server issue that they're experiencing where you, you see that you're behind the wall and well they shot you and you weren't behind the wall. Right. So like that kind of bugged me. But the movement otherwise felt really, really crisp. It didn't seem completely out of control. Um jumping was a fucking problem though. They need to fucking stamina nerf jumps. I don't think you should be able to spam jumping around the corner. Yeah, and back you should. Yeah. That's a little crazy. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a clip where that made it really broken with snipers. I tried not to abuse it. You could literally like scope in with your sniper and just start hopping around, and there was no penalty. And like, the visual <laughs> there's also no penalty on bad. shooting while you're in the air. I got so many jump shot kills, they were so easy to get. I mean, so that, yeah, that could I, get some fucking work done. Jumping was a movement issue. But aside yeah. from that, the sliding didn't feel overpowered or really underpowered. I might have been able to get no. a little extra slide on it, but nothing it wasn't it wasn't close to or out of hand. 
the do you think you were gaining uh, you were gaining uh distance with the slide or do you think there was no difference between sliding and running or just running i don't know i don't think i've seen a difference i wouldn't I didn't believe feel that like you didn't have to one. slide to get somewhere quicker you know what i mean yeah i think it would be by a case basis so like if if the case that you're in when you're running on the map calls for you to slide into coverage slide into coverage but if you're just right. running down the map trying to get to the other side to get to a clip, I would suggest just run. I did note one thing specifically. If you didn't sprint at all and you just walked, like walked the spawn down, your shots mm -hmm. were fucking fast. You scoped faster. Your scope management, like dragging, was faster than if you sprint, stop, scope, sprint, stop, scope. If you just keep walking and you never tack sprint once you start getting into the spawn, your shots mm -hmm. were wicked accurate. It was yeah. kind of interesting. I noticed there was a significant. Yeah. There was that was one that. that was one key thing that I figured out was like you definitely if you just stayed calm and composed, which was you know don't be running around too crazy. Like set yourself up in a nice spot where you know you see a lot of map and you have a wall you can duck under or whatnot. Dude, if you just yeah, if you weren't running around and you just like set up, dude, your shots were super accurate, stupid accurate. Yeah, I noticed that was like a big thing in the sec. It was so profound when I noticed Which is it. Good. I was like, in, you in know, I I want to I want to shoot something and I want to be aim whatever I'm aimed at and I pull the trigger. I want it to die. Yep. I want it yep. to be hit. Period. I don't. That's bullet drop bullshit. Like, I don't. Uh, in a multiplayer game, no. Like, kind of like multiplayer COD. Yeah. Should no. Happen. Like, it shouldn't even be a fucking thing. Nope. Warzone battles, uh, battle royales, and all that shit. I understand. Yeah, because you're fucking... I understand now. that if you see somebody 800 meters away, they shouldn't fucking be shot one shot instantly. Yeah. Like, yeah, it shouldn't that doesn't be make a multiplayer sense. map, that fucking thing. The map requires bullet drop. The map shouldn't exist. It's the fucking problems here. If it's multiplayer, yeah, it should not happen that way. Ooh, that was... Uh, I just saw a nice no-scope, so that's a good point, too. How did you feel about no-scopes? I feel like they were fucking hitting. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to hold you at all. I went for a couple no scopes, only a couple, maybe like a handful, and I didn't hit fucking one. The I was too fixated on wanting the quick scope, and shit was just hitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Other than the fact that I was getting a lot of hit markers, and like every time I fucking hit somebody before I died, it was always a hit marker, dude. And, and we're talking about like everything that was. It, if you read the sniper, it told you it was a one shot kill. Okay. For chest and up, uh -huh. and it, I felt like it's pretty easy to hit somebody in the chest, and I got a lot of uh, chest shots that were uh, one shot kills, but also some of them only did half health. Some of them didn't kill them at all. Uh, I, I felt like there was like an ability that they had when they got, I got shot. I, I wanted to that think that gave too. Them health when they got the I, kill on me that prevented trades. I had, I think, right. one singular trade on the map that was a very clairvoyant trade. I killed him, he killed me after, in the feed. Well, and... I do know on my stream right here, there is a clip of me, this dude coming out of the second point. Um, he came right out of his spawn. He didn't even know I was there. He had his back to me. I actually missed my first shot. I hit him with my, and he didn't even know I was behind him still. I hit him with my second shot, and right in the back from like five meters away, and it did half health. Yeah, I'm, and I'm I'm positive he didn't pop no ability or anything. Like he was walking out of his spawn. You yeah. know what I mean? So I hit him in his back, upper back, half health. It should have been like you know one shot, not yeah. Half we're health. we're way under half. So, there's it's that bug. You know what I mean? There, there's bugs like that. I ain't gonna lie. There that that shit happened a lot, and it could have I could have got some crazy clips, more crazy mm -hmm. clips, but uh. No, definitely. Yeah. It definitely cucked a lot of people with stupid shit like that. If not that, that fucking server latency going behind cover and getting clipped. I know that shit was happening left and right to me. Too. Yeah, my ping was literally like, my did not go, dying go below 40. Oh, my ping was everywhere. I have really good internet. Like, I run fiber through Spectrum, and I got fucking average about seven to 800 megabits a second. So I should have like a gig, but I don't normally run a gig. And fucking, I was always at like a hundred, but I was also partying up with wow. people like in fucking Canada, 
So I don't know if maybe that's that, why that yeah, has to be it, dude. Because when I play I by have, myself, I see. I have decent. a gig down with sixty up, but I don't have fiber. I have cable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you should have been fucking one hundred percent fucking pulling better ping, depending on where you at though. I like Yeah. So. I think part of it was being partied over there. I hit East Coast servers for Pennsylvania. So nice. I was pulling forty ping with a thousand megabyte down on cable internet. That's good though. That's really good. Honestly, it could have been a little lower, it would have been perfect. But like oh, for yeah. a beta test game fucking launch and that's killer. And that's what I was excited I about. I kept in my mind. I was like, this, not to go woke. They're not going to fucking do the, you know, it's not the full game. They're not going to revolve everything. And, you know, but I saw gonna a lot of people with touches. bad pain. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have bad internet, though. And, like, we don't realize that anymore. That's something we don't get, is, like, the new games have evolved the way that it plays. So the new right. games have implemented a lot of different dedicated server functions and things like that <laughs> to level the playing field for people like me and you to no longer be able to pay for good internet to be able to play at a great fucking capacity we go and play with somebody who's got 15 meg internet their shit barely loads netflix in two rooms so at mm-hmm. night when they get the whole family to go to fuck to bed and they're online they finally kick on the game puts us in a lobby and they're like oh well let me fuck this guy with a hundred fucking you know, meg speed, and let me drop this gig guy down. Let's get all these kids on an equal playing field. You spats, fats. Thank you for the follow, man. So it's it's quite but, wild. Um, like they do different things to help, you know, with frame rates and shit like that for people with lower internet. And it, it's part of an inclusive, you know, campaign to include as many people as they can. Eventually, eventually, they're gonna go back the other way because they're gonna get everybody on, and they're gonna try to force everybody to subscribe to the higher end. Like like all business models basically work, but um I, yeah I definitely felt like fucking X Defiant had a, a a huge indicator of the evolution of the market. So like back in the day, is what I feel King is pain, or Ping is King is what X Defiant's <laughs> running on those terms. Rather than here's a dedicated server, everybody better figure it out. We're gonna fuck everybody over, tell everybody's on an equal playing field, and then we'll play. X Defiance, like, if you've got good internet, he's got bad internet. Tough shit for him. Right. <laughs> Leaves a yeah, lot I mean, I'll honestly keep playing on the ping that it's at right now. Like, I don't I don't give a shit. Because everybody's yeah. playing on shit ping. You know what I mean? And it yeah. makes an even playing field. Yeah, ironically, right? Fucking ironically, when you don't want to go in and stimulate the fucking economy. Oh, well, no, yeah, I mean, dude, I solo queue Call of Duty, like, CDL. And I, my, my biggest blocker was... I couldn't get to Diamond 2. I was literally like 2 RP from Diamond 2 on COD, solo queuing. And my biggest problem was playing people that had zero ping. Yeah. I'm literally, and I'm the lowest I can pull is 25. And yeah, that's really good. But people don't understand, like, I'd rather be having 100 ping playing this dude with zero ping than 20, 30, 40 ping. Because this dude's literally playing in the future. Yeah, literally. And I'm not. Yeah. He is time warped at least fucking a claim or three or four ahead of me. And all my buddies that I, I, I'm equally as good as them, uh, well, not all of them, two of them. I mean, they, they hit Erie no problem, but also they have fiber internet. Also, they get zero ping. Not right. zero ping, but very, very low ping. And if I, I wanted to really- one them, I could literally pre-fire in a radar match 1v1 and still lose because they're just playing in the future, dude. Yeah, yeah, they they yeah, I can really relate to around the corner. That's an experience I personally had as well, especially with the ranks four v four system in Call of Duty. I got to Diamond One solo killing pretty much just very similar to what you were just stating, and I felt like once I got to that level and the players have a little bit more of an IQ and an understanding on how to play the game at a faster pace and more of an organized pace, even though it's ranked and you know it's really hard to replicate what you're seeing in what you know the CDL is pushing when it comes to that level of you know i guess you could say skill because it's not just skill at that level it's it's everything you know they put hours into the to get what you're seeing on on tv result wise but it's definitely discouraging to say the least when you're playing on a 40 plus ping and you just know that damn even if i'm shooting first or doing the right things 
there's yeah. a really good chance because this kid's got better internet or, you know, because the server I'm playing off of, that's going to decipher the outcome of the gunfight. And, you know, that, that, that causes a huge problem in the game because it's like, all right, man, this guy's not even necessarily doing anything better to outplay me. But we're just going based off server performance now, and yep, he's yeah. just running. At, he can literally just run at you, find the gunfight, yeah. and shit it's on you. It's a millisecond difference that's gonna make or break yeah. that win in a gunfight. And I think with X Defy, my experience personally on that, to relate it to the Call of Duty aspect of things with server latency and how FPS was performing and how I just felt at, at a certain point the game was, you know, handling itself. Because mm -hmm. I always compare it back to COD. That's just my, you know, that's my foundation of. Mm -hmm shooting game it's like okay well what does it do that's similar to call of duty and like i said i tried to stop doing that with the x-defined aspect of things because it was like all right bet server latency very similar definitely was rocking like a 26 to like a 66 ping it was fluctuating it was very weird i felt like there were certain gunfights maybe i should have won but maybe it was attachment based it was so raw i felt like everything was so new and i was just trying to take in as much as i could get within a short radius of time that they were offering to play it like, I don't want to make any, like, honest decision, like, oh, I'm not playing because of server, or I'm not playing because I felt like it was skill-based matchmaking. I don't even know if there's a reason not to play, it. and, like, that's me, spe like, truthfully speaking. I think everybody should give it a shot, and if it's something you feel like your PC or your console or your internet can't genuinely keep up to and maintain, like, performance-wise, and you feel like it's just an internet issue, it's really just going to come down to either upgrading the internet, upgrading the setup, or just maybe just chalking it up if it's just not for you on all because like me per, like i it's very similar to the call of duty aspect of things you get to a certain level with the rank system players are better internet stronger setups are better guess what shit's gonna get tougher and that's just gonna be the reality with x define as well and in my personal opinion obviously i'm sure other people are gonna be like well they're just you know if they could do this and that'll be that but there's you know there's a reason for why they're supposedly not implementing skill-based matchmaking in the beta or i guess you could say the trial aspect of it all but from my understanding people were also saying that they believed it was implemented skill-based matchmaking was implemented and that the servers were they kept losing connection to servers and they would get kicked back to like main screen it was beta so like at the end what? of the day we can't bank on it you know like it, it, that's just what they had showcased that weekend i think going forward servers will be stronger i think everything will be more solidified and, and you know it'll be more i guess you could say it'll be easier for people to run because they won't be so they, they'll have a better control of it all i guess that's the best way to explain it like they'll know what they need to do while it's happening that's why i said earlier in my statement they need to just pull the trigger stop being worried about the bad and just go with what you have that's already really good and i think the servers aren't horrible, and that's a really good thing. That's a really yeah. good thing to build off of. Yo, thank you so much, Alexander, for the follow. The game's going pretty good. We're just shooting the shit about it. And uh, welcome in, Burst. Who the hell is this? A little bit, not too much. Who's C? How you doing, man? I have no idea. Hey, Trip, how you doing? Oh, is this Sido? That's Sido, yeah. dude. Dude, doing good. We're actually, so we're all, <laughs> man, Burst, welcome in. I don't know if you're aware of what's up. So we're all shooting the shit about X Defiant right now. Um, kind of doing like a, a X Defiant review. So everybody's live on my my fucking Twitch right now. They hear Discord. They hear everybody talking. Yeah. They actually We're also see live I the over beta. here. I don't yeah. know. Out. Yeah. It's Chief. Hey, it's Chief. Hey, it's Chief. Hey, it's it's the up. Chief going hard in the car. I know. Yeah. Hey, we going hard in the car. Just to, just to clarify, everyone in chat, we are not driving. Yeah, you are definitely not driving. If he is, he's at red light. I swear, guys, I swear. Oh my promise? god. Promise. Promise. Piggy promise. Good, good, good. That's hella funny. But yeah, no, we're just kind of like shooting the shit, doing like a review over what everybody thinks of uh, the X Defiant beta. If you played, if you didn't even play and you just seen gameplay footage, you've heard hype. I have five on times two on it. That's oh, good. Shit. Love it. Damn, there you go. I didn't get lucky enough to hit anything crazy. I got cocked. It was, I, I disappointed yeah. myself, to be honest. Yeah, there was, uh, there was this one I definitely could have got like a 7 on, and the game ended. <laughs> oh, God. Because, because we just got so far in the game, we beat them, and I was in the middle of spawn trapping them, and it was upsetting. Yeah. I had some opportunities. I was beat on that game. I don't remember. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it rolls nicely. It's in the top right corner. Yeah, dude, it tracks your actual kill counter in the top right corner. Also, the kill feed above that in the absolute top right corner. Yeah. If you watch my stream right now, I'm, I got the gameplay going. But yeah, play going. But yeah, multis were a little, uh, a little broken. No, 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 it was a little easy to hit multi. Yeah. Shit, I'm leaving this as these are. This is what we're just gonna look at, chat. We're gonna leave them like this. Now, uh, whenever it came to your uh, uh, snipers, uh, your sniper settings, your settings uh, for your controller, would you have? So I run tactical always. I leave okay. my joystick as my slide. My punching right. is circle. A button punch Same. or tactical. I blew out my controller, actually. I was on tactical bumper jumpers for a while. I can't help it, dude. I don't know. It's like second. Now, what about your sensitivity? Shit, I think I only ran like a six. I ran a low six. Sense. Mm -hmm. So I ran a 50 50. Okay. And. I for the scope sensitivity I ran a point six eight. Yeah, I was on a hundred and higher than a six. That shit was oh and the reverse S curve mapping for the uh I ran precise. Assist. I think I ran precise. You ran precise. I think I ran precise. But yeah, it's it where I smelt, like that. it felt yeah, smelt. It smelt so good. Felt good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I felt like there's some things that it's gonna do good. But aim assist ain't real strong, good. which is cool. Oh, shit. Yeah, you shouldn't really need it. I mean, <laughs> I heard that whenever the game drops, like you'll be like if console is playing, you can play console only, but if you're playing PC, you gotta play everybody. So, you know, I can definitely see a big advantage for PC players, dude. Like if you're watching my content, you think it's good, dude. I, I promise you 100% of somebody with a mouse is probably going to do just as good. <laughs> I yeah. probably won't say better. It, uh, may, they're, they're probably going to do a lot more shaking and maybe some 360s and like shit like that. But, you know, as far as getting the kill, the kill is the same. You know, I'm just going to quick scope them. This dude might just quick scope them with fast sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I definitely don't think there was a lot of fucking aim assist, which I don't mind either. I do like to know. Now for red guns, for effect. red guns, that's a whole other story. Yeah, I have no clue. Like I said I sniped. Uh, I I do believe mouse and key is gonna have it because I tried out the MP7, I tried out the MP5, I tried out the ACR, and I tried the AK47. ACR shoots marshmallows, but it's still all right. It's not like actual marshmallows. The MP7 is very good. The MP5 I struggled with. And that AK-47 is fucking insane. Like, that thing melts. Yeah. That's crazy. I got ripped by everything. Like, all of them fucking felt so fast. The Vector and the ACR mm -hmm. felt like those were my two most feared. Every time I fucking seen somebody with one, or if I got killed, it seemed like there was a lot of those that were killing me. ACR makes me feel like the old school ACR. That motherfucker is being in. But, I mean, it's part of it. I think there's a narrative here that people don't remember in old Call of Duties, and I'm getting a captivation on this play-by-play -play daily right now with fucking BO2. People on scene mm -hmm. have been playing this shit. And, uh, dude, it ain't the same. It ain't what we're playing right now, bro. It ain't. Right. I, I started trying to, like, run around corners and like stand off i was like spot shots over here fucking peeked that corner and it was like duh, 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 and i was dead i forgot you get one bursted m m, m a, a fucking m a what was it m four eight eight one or some shit that motherfucker one burst you scorpion <laughs> yeah fucking third of a mag and that thing dumps a mag in like a sneeze, yeah, i remember bro. that gun that gun was melty yeah, and these motherfuckers are still using it. Target finder LMGs. Jesus, I thought that wasn't well, a thing anymore. How, how many people playing Black Ops 2? Like, can you find uh, a game pretty easily? So 40 people on average for the last two days are what run lobbies. You find a lobby. like We always find a lobby. But it's pretty much the same two lobbies, always. And it's the same mm -hmm. bullshit. But it's 20 bucks. It's fucking Black Ops <laughs> Yeah, you Ops find everybody noob tubing, but... 
and if it if it does come back into popularity, I mean the servers are up, the the capacity for a fan base is there. People just aren't playing it. But nonetheless, fucking dude, I've been I've been saying it for like three or four years now. Call of Duty with the way that uh, aim assist is now on Call of Duty and how easy it is for uh, controllers to shoot people, uh, and the way the movement has changed, they need to bring a jetpack game in. I used to hate them before, but now I feel like they'd fit perfect. Yeah, literally. Yeah, advanced nice. warfare style. I think. Like, and I is that a fact or not a fact? No. no I, he says no. Is he even talking to us? Hello. I don't know. Yeah, no. I think you're right on that. I think, and, and this might be selfish for me to want a little bit of extified success, because. I know if they do it, X Defiant's going to succeed. Like, mm -hmm. if new drops tomorrow, that goal four is supposed to be the goal four of 2045, right? See where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're going to have exosuits. Boots on the ground, exosuits. So you're going to have, like, double jump ability and, like, hyper slide ability, right? And, and that's mm -hmm. where they're going with it. There's going to be like 10 to 15 percent of the fucking fan base that's gonna go they're gonna go fuck this i'm going to cold war most of them are gonna go fuck this i'm going to x defiant yeah yeah and they're gonna go fucking right into x defiant you want to remember why they need to keep that hyper slide shit away <laughs> brings it in x defiant's gonna be coming down their leg because they need to be bringing remember, in the wall running in the jet pack what does it require for you to make a switch the only thing you're waiting on is COD to do what? Because X Defiant is what? Free. They're going to make their money in microtransactions, my friend. They're going to make Fortnite money. They don't give a fuck. They're not going to oh, charge I'll be you dumping all. cash on the game. You know? So they're going to come in and hope COD fucks up. And if COD don't fuck up this year, guess what? It's a free to play game. It's like Fortnite. So hopefully COD don't fuck up next year. Part of what people don't remember is the reason why Fortnite is so abundantly successful, aside from their ridiculous marketing, but is because COD kept fucking up. They kept fucking up. Somewhere down the line, they were pissing their fans off. And fans got tired of it, and they wanted to go play Fortnite for a weekend. And that weekend turned into a week. You know? So, I think X Defiant, in the direction they're going, are hugely what we were saying earlier about not honey potting everybody forever you can't keep teasing motherfuckers because people will get tired of it and they'll quit showing up it happens in everything and if they don't just tease people and they just get this shit together drop it and they work on it yeah i think we're i think x defiance gonna do really, really well i just i don't know if it'll be a cod killer cod killer but i definitely see its ability to put cod out from game to game, the second that God uh, does something wrong, that even just old school hard head dudes that are like fucking all the boots on the ground and running, they'll go play X Defiant this year because God changed, you know. This competitive scene's really got to show up then. True, and that's easy, I think, if if they're smart. Nah. Marketing a competitive market. For them, I think. Listen, be easy. listen. I, I thought the same thing with Rogue Company. That game was feeling nice, like was great at one point in time. The tournaments were that. rolling, but then out of nowhere, died. it just died, and nobody wanted to like fix the fucking game or assess issues. Yeah. It went through management multiple times, and that's, that's uh, where I designers. Money. And, and that was like the saddest said, nope. bullshit in the world. Damn. Yeah, next to find that that is a dark words issue. So they do have uh, like investor meetings, and they were talking about being March 31st was supposed to be their latest available drop date, and then they were saying like quarter four of 20, you know, 24 this year, Q4. So like, you know, anywhere between November December ish, being like the latest it drops, to maybe even now March 31st of next year. So long fucking way. And yeah, that's where I'm I mean, thinking. That's where I'm getting this heavy feel. They're waiting for goal four. They, they won't drop it in in tandem with goal four. That would be fucking developer suicide, because you know, no matter how shit the game is, everyone's gonna play it for the first month, for the first two months. But by then, people are gonna get tired of it and want to play something else. So they could be dropping it Q4 if goal four welches. 
If not, they might be dropping it like this time next year before Cod ever even gets a chance to make their next game and can shout them down. You see what I'm saying? And that's that's what they were right. saying in investor meetings when they when they hosted their last investor meetings. That's what they were saying in there. Was they were talking March 31st and then they were talking Q4 of 2024, maybe March 31st of 2025. So, I mean, it's still a ways away. We may see one more beta if they decide not Q4 2024. They may run a Christmas beta time, somewhere around that. Just to kit like, because that would be a good tactic, right? Fucking <laughs> let COD run their beta. And every time COD's beta goes offline, your beta just conveniently comes available. Magically pops up. Yeah. Like, oh, everybody's playing Modern Warfare 3. Oh, hey, Gulf War beta's available. Let's go play. Oh man, now we gotta wait two weeks for the full game. What am I gonna do? Play Modern Warfare 3? Boop. What's that? X Defiance beta's available? Why not? Fuck you, you see what I'm saying? And like what they're if they, doing. They're if they can release this game right before the new COD, it'd be huge because I dealt with the exact same issue last year. Because mm -hmm. We were we were about like a month and a half out from the new COD. Yeah. Uh, the finals dropped. Yeah. And yeah. people the were talking finals. about X Defiant <laughs> dropping too. So we were playing the finals and we were just gonna play the finals until Call of Duty or yeah. X Defiant came out. And I was saying if X Defiant comes out before Call of Duty, I'm not touching Call of Duty, period. Yeah. And yeah, I already yeah. know that like even if I did touch Call of Duty I'd get pissed off at it and just get right back on X to find it. Mm hmm Exactly. Actually, I have high expectations for next year's COD. I do, I do too, too, but I know Treyarch it's going to piss me off. The most development time ever, they, they, better, they better deliver. Yeah. I, I know I'm going to get pissed off. I know I'm going to get The thing is, though, so it's not. It's going to be... It's... X to find it's free. It's hard to not have it in your library. It's just going to be the same game still, though. Like... It's no, not going to be special. on a new. It's not going to be on a new engine. Like, Call of Duty's been using the same engine over and over mm -hmm. and over again. You're talking about files stacked on top of fucking files, dude. Don't We're talking me. like, dude, like, like what? One of the glitches like man. last week for Warzone, you could like dolphin dive on somebody and insta kill them. Like, what is it? PhD <laughs> flopper from fucking zombies. That file ended up in fucking Warzone. Like, like, there's so much fucking bullshit on that engine. Like. I I would be super happy if they were like, yeah, Call of Duty new engine, like that I shit's gonna be fresh, coming. fresh. So I think with the COD thing, so you know how they did the Call of Duty app. I'm kind of leaning. I, I would almost say I'm acutely aware that they're working towards it, but I haven't heard anything else. I pay a lot of attention to stocks too, so like I listen to stocks for these companies as well. So I'm interested as fuck. On like how Microsoft's buying these companies and doing this shit, I think Microsoft's gonna launch an engine, um, a new engine, revamp Call of Duty, and I think genuinely what they're gonna do is the Call of Duty app we're playing on right now that has what three different games on it is gonna have all of the fucking games on it. This next era that they build this new engine on is gonna have an, a stack of the old COD games on it, and then every time they put a new game out, it's gonna be played on that app. You're gonna just pull it in. They're gonna ba going? basically build a play store for Call of Duty. So no longer are you gonna go to Steam here, here, here. You're gonna go to the Call of Duty app, download the app, and then you're gonna go through the application and make microtransactions for each game and buy the games from the application itself. And then the game's gonna be hosted that way instead of taking my pen. through all these other things because the game has become so going? titanically big. It's it, like. PlayStation and Xbox and all this shit between Sony and Microsoft blew up about like Sony saying 90% or I think it was actual, actual numbers I think were like 60 or 70 percent of the people that buy a PlayStation console literally only buy it to play Call of Duty. The only game ever played damn near on the console is COD. That's fucking crazy. And when Microsoft right. wanted to acquire it and bust that bitch open on the Xbox Pass for everybody to play. Sony was like, that's going to slaughter our business. Because people are just going to go buy your dirt cheap Xbox One, pay 20 bucks for the Game Pass, and they're going to play every Call of Duty available. This would be console right. suicide for us. And they took that shit all the way to the Supreme fucking Court and American Court Systems to fight their ass on that. 
eventually when that new engine releases, you can't argue nobody on a new technology or a new platform, new engine, new everything. And I think at some point in this next era of COD, I think that's what Microsoft's gearing for, because they already tried to. They already tried to rip all this shit off and basically put it all in one store for you to just go tap into anytime you wanted. But the thing was, what they tried to do was pit you to going to Xbox only. And it would have fucking murdered Sony and PlayStation. So I think eventually COD's going to step out and become its own play store. And that's going to eliminate consoles or any actual company from really being able to say anything about it. Because like nobody can argue about Google Play or the Apple App Store. Because they're, they're a completely separate fucking entity. You know what I'm saying? Same way like nobody can complain about Twitch. Like Twitch doesn't work on my Roku unless I pay four fucking dollars a month. Can you believe that shit? <sighs> Get dead ass. Go buy a Roku TV and try to watch Twitch. Good luck, my friend. I got a Roku. I got, I got a Roku. I can't. Is that the Why? only app? The only I app I can find is one that you re- it requires you to subscribe to Twitch. Not to a... You can subscribe to the streamer, but that would be crazy. You subscribe to Twitch. Like, I think it's a like Turbo or something. And then you can uh-huh. use it. It's totally legal to just literally paywall gatekeep you because it's an app. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that's what they're working on. I think they're trying to figure their way into creating a new engine, first off, so they can really put their Microsoft stamp on it. And then they can implement it as an application hey, store. Appreciate that follow maker. The moment that happens, I actually have hope for Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It'll be a whole new era. It, it, what, what it is, oh, too, is people not liking lot. change. Drives you nuts. And I also like, can't wait for the new gen consoles. Oh. I don't know if I'm ever going to go to again, man. Yeah, I mean, I have a PC right now. I mean, I'm not going to, like, I don't know. I have a 2070, okay, yeah. with an i9-900. And, you know, I can still play Call of Duty, and I can pull more frames in my 120. But, I don't know, I just feel like my console just runs smooth. And it's consistent. Yeah. And I ain't got to worry about a bunch of extra bullshit. Oh, the game. And I don't know. Fucking PCs are expensive. The console is a one time thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it, that motherfucker's ready to run. The thing's ready to go. Yeah. And it's an experience so, you definitely don't get with a computer. When you download yeah. that, or not even download it, you first unbox that bitch, plug it in, turn it on, and that fucking logo plays. It's it's still nice to have a computer, though. Yeah, you gotta have one. You got to. Be able to run your other shit, you gotta have one. You know? Maybe not a desktop, but you would need at least a laptop. Mm -hmm. I think desktops are fucking super underrated nowadays. They used to be, for a while, it was pointless to have one. Because you really didn't have anything to do that a laptop couldn't do. Nowadays, like, the to get a laptop that can compete with, like, a decent desktop... You gotta spend like ten grand, dog. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Like I bought my computer back in the day when it first came out. And they also you also there. can't like buy like parts bucks. for your laptop. When you buy a laptop, like yeah, there is locked. no like I'm gonna upgrade my graphics card. Like mm-hmm. no. Like yeah, if you yeah. like if you're gonna go buy a laptop right now, your best bet is to buy the best one you can fucking yep. find. <laughs> yep, by the top of the motherfucking line. Because in two years, that bitch is gonna fucking depreciate like a son of a bitch. Um, I bought mine six mine, years, I think was, and I think then after that, behind. it's invalid for gaming. Yeah, mine was about a year behind, and now I'm seeing them on Facebook for about three hundred bucks. I paid fifteen hundred for mine, and that was about four or five years ago. So right. yeah, but it, it runs good. It runs really well. But I have a desktop now, and like I could upgrade the graphics card. Put so much more space on it. Like yeah, nowadays, nice one, man. Got like six nowadays it on makes it. sense to have fucking... a desktop for some things. <laughs> Colorful. Are you guys planning on getting the new console for the for the release or no? Fuck yeah, dude! The first one that's got two forty hertz, I'm getting it. The Best Buy credit card's ready. <laughs> you have no clue. Man, it's that got a two thousand dollar credit limit credit on that bitch. Card. Hell yeah. yeah. And like sixteen hundred of it's ready right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, you just if you just dude if you just cash at me, 
I'd fucking probably do it. <laughs> He's, uh, I mean, you know. I'd have it sent right to your house, no questions asked. All you had to do was send me the cash app and your address. <laughs> That's you fucking funny. Addy, All right, give me a second, guys. I need a bathroom, bro. This is... My ad wants to That's okay. I did not text that I wanted. That's okay. Yeah, I'll be right back. Well, well, you guys can still shoot the shit or say what you want to say or talk about anything. I just, I'm letting you know I'm stuff at all. I gotta pee. All right, so I've got a question. Do you guys think that with X Defiant now having a little bit more, I guess you could say, content out there and there's more people that can, you know, discover it, do you think X Defiant's going to have like a Call of Duty type release where their numbers are going to be insane and it's going to be like, you're going to see a complete dip of viewership on COD for a bit, or do you think it's just going to be like, oh, whatever, like the release is just going to be another release and it's not really going to affect viewership on other platforms? That's a good think, question. So, or do you think it's... X is going to like be the meta? All right. So, you got to think about the ratio of people that watch and play and then the people that watch and don't play. I don't know what that ratio is. Okay. Now, if whoever just people whatever people just watch like people that just watch and it's, they watch call of duty they're probably all gonna definitely gonna go to x defiant the day it drops and watch that fucking gameplay so just the people that watch shooters alone and don't play them are all gonna go watch x defiant a lot of the people that play all shooters are going to go uh, x defiant if you're going to pick a shooter that's going to be losing a fan base the most it's probably going to be call of duty and there's a, a lot of people right now that love call of duty but don't like the call of duty it is now that are playing other shooters and exploring other options and are waiting on that's games like X to find on old gen games that's another yeah. question another topic of discussion i don't really necessarily think it has anything to do with x to find but um, do you guys see X Defiant being accessible on Game Pass for people that are playing Xbox. Oh, dude, yes. it's free. It is going to be free. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be free. All right. So I heard now this could be a rumor, obviously. Like this is more COD based. So like for the people yeah, that are in soon. COD, I'm hearing that PC is going to have accessibility, obviously, because I'm on a PC. It matters a lot to me, at least. When it comes to the Game Pass, Call of Duty, old gen CODs, right? I'm hearing that World at War. I'm hearing Call of Duty. Uh, there's like three or four CODs that's coming to the Battle Pass. They're not Battle Pass. The, um, true. The, um, I heard that it's all going to be on a Battle Pass. Don't be old ones. Oh, you mean Game Pass? The Game Pass, or not game the Battle Pass. Pass. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I heard well, I about that too. I know what you meant, too. and then I fucked up too. <laughs> so, and with that being said, now, is X Defiant looking to come out more towards summertime? Because if that's the case, from what I'm being informed, Game Pass is going to be pushing these old gen CODs in the end of June. Now, if that's so, the case, that nobody could be knows a release date on it. And the only thing you can do is think about uh, you could just kind of guess. So, if you want to guess, you want to think about when's the best time X Defiant should release. Yeah, and that's my. Kind of like what I was saying earlier. If 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 it was gonna release, like last year, they said it was gonna release, and I was playing the finals and waiting for X to find the release, and Call of Duty was releasing in a, a month and a half. The new Call of Duty, this one that's out right now, and that would have been huge if X Defiant would have dropped before the new Call of Duty because there would have been just you would have had people playing the game, um. As soon as it drops, and it, it, they would have been attracted to X Defiant, and then Call of Duty would have dropped, and they would have fucking played it. Uh, they were some of some of them were probably gonna get shit on. They would have got pissed off, and they would they've already been playing X Defiant. They just go right back. They just yeah, go so right back. Like, to X way, it's like a security spot, like for the players that aren't really. There's good shooters out there, like like whenever I played uh 2019 MW 2019, 
I was really good at it. I, I quick scope my ass off. I got shadow banned, so I couldn't play at all, and that pissed me off because I was doing the phase five shit. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try Rogue Company because everybody's telling me to try Rogue Company. And then I didn't get off Rogue Company because it was such a great shooter. And then I found out, I guess I was banned for about two weeks and got unbanned. And I, even though I got unbanned, I went back a couple times, but I didn't stay. I just went right back to Rogue Company. So you're just thinking as long as X Defiant properly schemes their release, it could be beneficial for them long term compared to like a temporary like blow up. Uh, or do you think a release at all with a new title is going to be good for for them at this point because of how much they've already spoken upon and built up and put this like like stigma out there that it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, like, but we don't even know when, you know, like that. That's my biggest concern as a fan for them right now is I just want to know when to expect this game to be out so that this way I could play it. Because as content creators, as streamers, as an org, you know, as a family. There's so much that we could do with it. Obviously, there's endless opportunity with, you know, a new game that's going to be pretty halfway decent from what it seems to be. It's going to have sniping opportunities out there for people that are into the sniping. It's going to be faster paced with the subs if you want to get into the competitive aspect. It seems like it's going to favor to a little bit of everyone, just depending on the play style and the person individually. But like I said, I just like to ask questions in regards to viewership and how people are going to, you know, maybe flock to one platform for a little bit because of all of the hype around it or do you think call of duty is going to do something spitefully to kind of make sure x defiant can't take their you know platform completely from them for a week or two because yeah all right, at the end of the day we know viewership's been altered it's definitely just what it's going to be to a certain level and certain degree especially when a new release comes out but i just think to maintain the hype and to keep that level of like like you know when COD 4 and World at War and Modern Warfare 2, like all the old gen CODs came out, like they mattered and they still matter to this day. Is, is that what X Defiant is going to be going for? Are they going to yeah, be a that old? Game? The old gen COD, they 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 were fucking simple, dude. Like old gen CODs, like uh, Call of Duty 4, uh, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, MW3, oh, yeah. uh, World at War, Black Ops One, they were all fucking simple, dude. It wasn't like, and yeah, and another thing you also got to think about, internet back then was completely different, and everything I felt like, even though it wasn't as smooth as what it feels now, the registration was more fair back then than what it is now on Call of Duty. Yeah, it was like a fair playing field back then. I felt compared to now because, like I was saying earlier. It could be the slightest little advantage, you know, fiber to not fiber or a PC to a console or, you know, prime example settings, even if certain people don't know what they have to do settings wise to give them the best performance. It really just comes down to little things. But earlier in the times of when we were coming up and playing and getting into this whole thing, especially gaming wise and Call of Duty, it was like the simplicity is what really made it. You know, it, it was straight to the point. That's true. And I think now. You got so much factoring that you have to put into like, hey, this is why we lost. You know, I was playing on 60 fucking latency all day. <laughs> Hate to say it, but you're shooting, you're shooting marshmallows past 40 ping. It's, and that's what we were saying earlier. You know, it's like maybe with X Defiant, it'll be similar to COD on that level. So there won't be that much of a difference for you to be able to be like, oh, hey. Um, does it really matter that much? Because my normal ping is 69. Like, I'm not even joking. It's really um, below 40 on COD, bro. Um... It My does. average ping usually stays a... about 69 on all games. When, when yeah, you're playing so on a, whatever like you're playing team. competitively, all right, so if, if if you're solo queuing and you're in Diamond 1 playing CDL uh, multiplayer, uh, you're going to be playing people that are going to be very low ping. Like, we're talking, like, not... We're talking, like, 0 to, like, 10 ping. <laughs> like, we're talking uh, fiber internet, not cable internet, not satellite internet. We're talking... Fi fiber is just different, dude. And yeah. you're going to be... They're going to be playing in the future. Like... And also, if you if your internet's even just... A, dude, basically, I'd rather play somebody that has 0 ping with 100 ping than fucking 20 ping or 30 ping or 40 ping or 50 ping. I'd rather have 100 fucking ping and play somebody that has 10 ping or 0 ping. I... That or give me fucking 10 ping or 0 ping, and then I can actually compete. Never. I'm testing it out. 
I, I over tested it out. It's Yo, just, baby boo. It's ridiculous. Uh, internet's definitely a thing when it comes to competitive <laughs> Call of Duty and multiplayer. I, I actually have to agree with you on that, considering the fact is my internet shit. <laughs> um, I can't really do much on it. But what I do know is whenever I start playing on other people's connections, and if I have a decent connection and my family's not on my internet, I'm usually doing decent. Um, but when I was playing on Hotspot, for some fucking reason, oh man, my shot was on. And I wasn't missing. I was, I was on Hotspot, and I think my ping was like 30 or 39. <laughs> I had a really good ping on Hotspot for some reason, I don't know why. <clears throat> I don't believe it really does make or break an individual's like overall skill and performance but i think it factors into those micro seconds in the game where you do have some gunfights that are is definitely where i'm losing that's one thing i've because noticed big time that that truthfully like prime example if i'm playing on a new york server and this is just what i've experienced in the rank aspect of things with the game which is what i really like was trying to compare it to the x defiant topic with their servers and whatnot because earlier in the discussion we were discussing if there was going to be a, you know, an advantage or is there going to be like issues with that? And because there's always been a factor in Call of Duty as of recently, especially with, you know, skill based matchmaking. I said personally, if you don't have an updated setup and your internet's completely out of date and things aren't really just, you know, realistically where they should be in a modern day setup for gaming with just how everything is so high demand, you may have issues. But on Call of Duty, and this is what I'm experiencing still, even on a really nice PC, playing on decent internet, if I get anything higher than a 36, this was, it's, it's a 36 latency or a 36 ping, whatever the hell you want to consider it to be, I am shooting marshmallows. At a distance, it's a lot harder to kill people. At close, I lose more gunfights because of that microsecond engagement difference, whether it's a one, two millisecond difference or whether it's just the internet difference. If you don't have that up-to-date setup or good internet, you're going to have an issue on any game, really, at this point in this day and age. I'm on 10 compete. megabyte internet, and the only thing that has me an up-to-date kind of thing would be the X that I play on. With the download speed? Yeah. Get it, baby. Thank you, thank you. Like, I, I really, like, sometimes I have to play on a VPN. Ooh. Sometimes I have to play on a VPN. Um, especially if I'm playing like on like EU servers, because I one bar. Well, you're also Roman. In your defense, dude, and I would be on the same type of time as you with the VPN aspect because you're an old gen, and not saying it's not as populated, but it's a lot easier to control your fate with performance running the servers you know you can connect to based off the VPN. So don't feel like you're wrong about what you're saying, because dude, you're dead accurate. Like those European servers. For you, the fact that you're even able to maintain a 69 ping or latency is truthfully actually halfway decent. So, I mean, you could take it with a grain of salt. I would just say every game, it really does matter a little My bit. Hello. Like, especially Hello. when you play online tournaments, you could use the CDL as an, like, an example. Like, they always say those there's online warriors and then there's people that show up to land and dude wait like, they just don't and then they don't show up it really could factor in on internet but i also think that a lot of players like prime example on x defiant how many players truthfully really went in depth to their settings and did all the things they needed to do to really enjoy the, the, the you know the gaming experience because i noticed that when i didn't do settings and then when i did do settings like within a game or two just the playing experience and how everything felt in my frames and <clears throat> It was a major difference. Like, and that yeah. was just yeah. going through a couple of basic, simple settings that maybe the average casual, you know, they don't know to do or they don't feel like they should have to do because they just want to play the game well, and turn it on. And, I think for the average casual, know. that holds true too. Most definitely, like, at a higher level and the higher the level you get, you start noticing that. Like Roman mentioned a minute ago, yeah. saying he's starting to notice those microseconds more and more being a problem. And it's like, once you start noticing it, it becomes a proliferative issue and when you're at a certain level it's very much there so like anybody who's casual isn't gonna notice like your girlfriend's dad playing he's like i don't have no issues and you're like 
Homeboy, you're laying down in the fucking house the three-fourths of your goddamn Warzone <laughs> game. Of course you don't know any damn difference. Your game loads up one square of the map and stops rendering for 20 minutes. Like, I would hope you don't have an issue, but like when you're yeah, playing like us, where we're on one side of the map, we die, resurge on the other side of the map, or multiplayer, we're running through the map so fast that it has to keep up all these renderings of explosions, gunshots, kills, cars blowing up, you know, all this other stuff going on. That's where you start to get to that point where those microseconds matter. When you go from, no, what was the difference between me hitting a quad feed or that 5-on was your connection. Or what was the difference between a 5-on X2 and a 6-on was your connection. Because that guy was around the corner if your connection would have been caught up with his. So, like, an yeah. X-Defiant, if it's going to be segregated, COD nowadays isn't as bad. We were talking about that earlier, how Call of Duty has done a lot of work to lower the playing field for everybody. So if you've got shit internet or great internet, doesn't matter, everybody's in on the even field. Because if it wasn't that way, not nearly as many people would be playing it. Right now, they're trying to make this market as broad as possible and as accessible as possible, especially because internet through COVID got an accessibility expansion unprecedented. So they're trying to make sure anybody who got that government package and is getting slow internet or anybody that's got any internet at all can be able to get on this game. And in an essence, if the X Defiance leaning towards the old Call of Duty status, which is King is uh, Ping is King, then I think that narrative will be a little bit more in your face. It won't be the commanding stroke, I can tell you for sure personally, because I've played shit internet like almost my whole life. And I've I've still been able to fucking hit shit. So it's not a it's not a guarantee that it's gonna stop you from being able to do something or be able to compete. But I will assure you, you put yourself in a lobby. If King becomes ping and X Defiant launches, you go in and play against somebody with really good internet in a private lobby. You remember Black Ops 2 when we everybody learned how to spawn shot? You remember how that went down? That's exactly how they ran that shit. Is because those kids that were those guys had decent internet. And if you ever caught yourself in an inverse, which I didn't even experience, I'm sure you had, where they didn't have that quite that connection, they would miss every so often and you'd get out of spawn. And that's why. Like, it, the, if, if fucking pings king on X Defiant, we'll see a little more of it, but it won't command it. No. What? Is this going to be, you got to realize the accessibility is so profound anyways, you know, and being a free game, internet connection ain't going to be a question. Most Only one of the people playing games. free games don't really have the greatest internet anyway, typically, yeah. you know. And I like how you stated that it's not going to be a commanding factor because, mm -hmm. you know, what? a lot of people love to use the whole... Like, whatever initial excuse they could come up with to just not play something or just put mm -hmm. me negative. And I think the community needs to rally around X Defiant and make them better. Instead of being like, oh, just, you're horrible. And you know how it is. YouTubers, I get it, man. Content's content. You're going to go for your clickbaits. You're going to go get these people to jump off the title. That's awesome. But I really think if we want a competitive shooter... To, to give us something other than the play, then, you know, maybe what we're already dealing with the last few years. And it's actually going to stay relevant, like how, you know, these good games that we love and have grown up upon playing, such as Call of Duty, CSGO. I mean, fuck, man, we could say Halo, Gears of War, let's really bring it back, you know? If this game is going to be successful, for the first time in a long time, I, I really, really bank on the community just making them better. And... Don't just factor in that, you know, because there was a two-day trial and, you know, maybe your internet wasn't maintaining or it wasn't stable and you were having some issues. Don't let that be your final, you know, your final opinion on the game. That's that's the biggest thing with this community, too, nowadays. Social media, it's so easy to just go post something. and think that going forward, like, X Defiant, they seem to be very strategic on just communication. And Aix isn't an idiot, obviously, man. That dude's a... Cod veteran, a Cod OG, he's heavily active in this game, and I listen to a lot of what he's got to say in the flank, and I truthfully believe in the fact that I think X Defiance in good hands, and I think that's where we can actually, like, shift the trust aspect into, like, okay, yeah, it's gonna be a game that may not be out for a little bit longer, 
But I trust and believe that, prime example, the commanding factor of the internet and the servers and everything that Call of Duty has worked on, I think they've learned so much just from that that there won't be really much of an issue, especially like you said with the whole thing with COVID. They just want everybody to be able to play this game. And it's just like Fortnite. And that's what I'm going to go back to. I want the community not only to just make X Defiant better with this all, but maybe this could be like, you know, they could bounce off of each other. Other game, like, you know, Fortnite kind of in a way, you know, we're replicating a certain degree on other platforms such as Call of Duty with battle passes. And, you know, that didn't really come Just around me. until Fortnite. You know what I'm saying? So, right. like, For- let's make the game better off of X Defiant as well. Like, X Defiant is another opportunity to just make everything else strong. <laughs> Fortnite's the last mainstream game that like really came out that you know stuck. Oh my god, dude! And I'm praying X yeah. Defiant can just replicate it in a way. Not, don't yeah, copycat. Own... Stop like copycat. Yeah, no, do it in your own way. <laughs> side. Like, dude. Because, because you know what, guys? We we love COD, right? Fortnite. I mean, let's just keep it real. We love COD. I'm it's live on weird. Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> but it would be yeah. so nice to have another game like COD, similar to COD, we're maybe a little different, right now. but that All just can keep up with like. That right. level of expectation. Just another FPS shooter that you can just yes, go, go to. Man, you know what yes. I mean? Mm-hmm. You can and still also, you could hide up there and you can play it and stuff. But you know what I mean? And just another game that's just so so similar that you know is good for content and everything else. Like, what's yeah. your guys' opinion on that? Do you think that X Defiant kind of lays really like lies within the community's hands too a little bit? Like, do you guys think I'm crazy with that or no? No. So you know how toxic COD fans are. Like, let's just keep it real. We're the most toxic there is. Like. That's what yeah. it was known Almost for is the old <laughs> fucking God lobbies, bro. Like, like they'd be so some bad. YouTube videos, man, on Modern Warfare 2 game chat. Everyone would be canceled. Be Everyone would be canceled. You're canceled. <laughs> You're canceled. You're canceled. <laughs> and then the, the best part is, is nowadays, they're promoting, now this is off topic, but they're promoting shit for weed, which, you know, whatever, man. You smoke your weed, you're, you, you know, do what you got to do, right? I'm, I smoke weed, you know, and I'm a, I'm a medical patient. Mm-hmm. But you guys can't combat me for... Voicing an opinion, maybe it's not a good opinion, and I'm just having a normal conversation. I got you. But you guys are dropping hammers on people for combating for for voice chat for me calling someone a pussy. Come on, man, this is crazy. Gold, Kua, dude, I don't trust. What's the AI? Yeah, I know, man, but that's insanity. Let's worry about our. Get rid I mean, of the AI. There's so much other real. things to worry about than me bullying some shit on. Yeah, online, like dude. like wall hacks and more zone. About you boosting. Okay, I, that's just to say. Let's worry about the rank system. Like, let's actually control our fate with the competitive aspect of things. In regards to well, that's what Call of Duty's done for the past right fucking like silver five dude. years. I'm silver one. They it's fucking, like, they, they fell off lie. and relied nothing but on fucking, you know, rank play, MLG, CDL, all that, you know, all that shit. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I think they started doing tourneys back in Modern Warfare 3, like the OG, and then fucking ever since then, that it was all based on competitive. Yeah. Black Ops 1 was like the last game they like actually made like f- intended for entertainment and fun, you know what I mean? Like they would That's add new, impressive. you know, new game modes on the, you know, now yeah. it's just all copy and paste. So I think what you were saying about it right in the community's hands definitely has some validity to it because like if one big creator came out right now and I know a handful of them have and will continue to um, on YouTube saying the game's bad, it's going to sway people's opinion because people are very impressionable. And that's what I'm saying. wreck the community. But I think it's very important to remember that's not always the worst case scenario as positioning from where you look at. Is if you're yeah. if you're a made man, then you want everybody to love the game. If you're not a made man, and none of the made men want the game, then it's kind of up to you and the developers to rally if it's good enough or not to try to become a made man through the game. Because there's always that element that people completely miss, and I guess that's like secret sauce, but it's on every fucking YouTube video of how to, like... Everybody comes up from something. I didn't even know Rainbow Siege 6 really was fucking popular. Like, I thought that game was dead as shit. Jinxie's currently live with 60,000 plus people right now. You want to know why? Because he made himself a made man on a game that, in my opinion, probably most of the people I know and most of the people in COD think is shit. But he enjoyed it, so he made something out of it. 
And I think it's extraordinarily important for creators in the community space to take that upon themselves and understand what that means when a game isn't covered you by mainstream creators, it isn't backed by mainstream creators, and it isn't pioneered through that. Because it creates a lane for people to become made men, made women, whatever the hell, you know? Gives you a lane to get there. And if if you could just put that past, you'll find yourself a lot further along. And I think that's what a lot of these teams are fucking missing anyways. You know, they're they're sticking to the script. They want to be the trend. But they're trying to fit the trend rather than make the trend. And that's a problem. You know, they're like, oh, everybody's on Cold War? Yeah, fuck Modern Warfare. This shit sucks. But they forget, like, nobody fucking knew who Sprat was until BO2 came around and people were like, hey, you guys remember Black Ops 1? That game sucked. Yeah, there was this guy, Sprat. Sprat. Who the fuck's that? Dude's best guy on, on Black Ops 1. Like, Sprat got a lot of his prestige in the community because he was a savage at a game people absolutely fucking hated. So it's not always a bad thing. And I think the content creation in this game is 100% there for the community. I really do. Absolutely. I think this is the best one on the market for fucking competing with COD when it comes to not being Call of Duty. Like, I played one other game that even comes close to this kind of play, and it doesn't feel even close to this good. It feels so shitty. It's unbelievable, and it's called Combat Masters 5. It's also free. It's like a PC game. But it's as close to COD for free as you can get, and it's still not as good as this game is. And it's fully fucking out. It's been out forever. It's made a fuck ton of money. So, like, all those kids are going to come here. So there's there's going to be a market for it, man. And I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and think by any means it's... It's not ready. Like, I feel like it's fucking ready, damn it. If they dropped it tomorrow, I would be playing it right now. <laughs> they need to fix some stuff. For sure. A lot of people are experiencing issues so playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we talked... They'd have to at least fix that before they published it. We talked about something, um, and I don't know what your fucking opinion was. How much server desync or, like, bullet hit detection issues did you run into? So I play on PC, and the only time I ran into any kind of issues was if, like, say I forgot to hit record on my uh, OBS, so I had to go tab over real quick and hit record. As soon as I tabbed over, I was I was stuttering around the whole map, just stuttering. Yeah, actually, that happens to me too sometimes. But if I started the game up, already had everything ready, didn't have to tab out or anything, and just played, game was great. Never, like, I didn't have any hit detection problems, nothing, like... You didn't have many issues well. where, like, when you made it around the wall, you died. You were running. Oh uh, yeah, the yeah, that happened a lot. But yeah, that happened a lot too. Or like, fucking, you swear you. I shot think him, that was like me already dying, walking, but it, I just had a couple seconds to move. I just think it, I would have mm-hmm. actually. Thank you for the follow, Roy. Um, I think I would have actually been fine. Mm-hmm. I just I think felt it, like it I think that's being beta for sure. Yeah, was, yeah, I think that really not a problem. I would be dead either about. way. Like. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it was just the game not del- the game delayed it. You know what I mean? Right. I got around the wall before, it, like on my screen before it actually, but I was already actually dead on his screen. So I right. should have been playing off what what he saw, not like what I was seeing. Right. See, there's so um, just like I, that, think, I think so. It was on Narrow Cinema's video, his second take of it. They talk about it, or he talks about it, and he shows an example of where, like, as he's dying, he gives a fucking he shoots somebody. And I seen that happen quite a bit. So like that was something I ran into. Something that the larger creators found and I know other people were finding. Um and it's not that everybody found it. Thank you, uh, Victor Caesar. But uh nonetheless, like I was curious how many people like what people felt. Because I felt like kind of like what you're saying, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like to me, it's not necessarily the same. I felt like it was a beta thing. You know, like it's still fucking early release. They for sure are pumping in the money they probably have in funding for the server. So, like, we're we're running on some kid's fucking glorified PC at home right now. <laughs> He's right, almost probably. a dedicated server. Like, look at this shit. We got a whole beta running. And they're all smoking Cubans, cheers, waiting to, like, load the fucking full server or something, you know? I felt like it was definitely just a... Because said server test beta, bro. And, 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 like, I feel like it only needs you know? minor tweaks. Yeah, like playing the game fate uh, felt fresh. No, 
Mm-hmm. Far it didn't, it didn't feel like arm. every of the like the same game copied and pasted from like years and years. Like every game feels like so similar anymore. Oh boy, I got three up this dude right away. It's nice to have. I don't know. I just felt good. I, I like the way the sniping yeah. felt. I think that needs a little bit of buffs. I think weapons yeah, need a little bit of arrangements. SMGs moved a little bit too fast. ARs hit a little too hard. I think everything needs. I think uh, health was too quick. But I mean, all around fucking, you know what I mean? That's stuff that they're looking into as the, that's what the whole point of beta is to see what's hitting hard, what's not hitting hard enough, what's, you know. Yeah, amen to that for sure. And then if the devs do their job that, you know, and actually pay attention to what the people want, the game will be great. You know what I mean? Precisely. But if they just get in right into the money and right into fucking easy fucking tra- uh, micro transactions and shit, the game's going to go to hell real quick. Yeah, I, I think. If they're smart with this, I'm by no means am I going to be able to have any weight in their financial decisions. I know this. Thank you for the follow, Nick Nit. I think everybody should turn around on this idea with all of these companies about excluding gameplay transactions, period, and making all microtransactions specifically only like arts and like artistic shit, you know, visual aesthetics only. Because the pay to win method is so similar and so eerily close to being a gambling machine, it doesn't doesn't sit right. So I would like to see them make it to where if you pay any money, it's just to look cool, not play better. I agree. So if they do that, microtransactions, they're gonna still sell a shit ton of them because I mean they they can get anybody, anyone they're willing to fucking work with. Hey, you want to do a 50-50 split on all the skins we sell, Post Malone? Oh, yeah? All right. Well, who wants to play as Post Malone today? I mean, I wouldn't mind. If you're telling me it's like two bucks? You know? I mean, shit, that wouldn't be bad. Five bucks even wouldn't be terrible. You know? So they can do good collaborations, things like that. Not only will that have the fans keep relevancy, but they can make money that way. And they can fund a lot of this shit. But I hope they don't get into the microtransactions work night, too crazy with, uh, with like, gameplay style stuff. Like, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if you see map packs come back and the shit being a big thing. You know? Because, like, I don't feel like map packs are even a thing in COD anymore, for sure. I feel like everybody just has the DLCs now. I really and like the sound cues cost. they have in fucking X Defiant, dude. That, like, the way mm-hmm. the foot sounds and everything, and the like the way stuff sounds in the game, yeah, so really crisp, game really clean. That, that was one thing I didn't even think much about. But I didn't, I didn't mind any of the sounds in the game, either. Like, I felt like all the guns sounded really good. Now, the AR sound files were completely drawn. I didn't hardly hear a single assault rifle that I myself fired. Every time I yeah, I didn't, gun, go, I didn't go sound test or like anything. My, well, it was just pick one up and use it. it. sounded like I put my fucking head under water and was ripping that bitch over fucking water. Like, it literally I, sounded like I was in water while the gun was above water shooting. I, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> like, it sounded like somebody was across the room shooting my gun. It was maybe it was just me you know what i'm saying but yeah like, i didn't i didn't even shoot one ar the whole beta damn it i tried to just at least pick one up i was gonna try to do just like four hours and run through all of the guns and i couldn't i just kept playing with the fucking pack 15 i couldn't in 44 i couldn't help myself it was, i kept trying to get a clip that i was proud of i'm excited no matter how it lands if people like it or not I'm going to have some content to create on it. Because I know, no matter what, it's going to get to a point where it's going to piss me off. It always does. No, I really like the way the grenades felt in X Defiant. Like, it was so satisfying when you cooked a grenade and fucking threw it across on a point and you got a couple, like, two or three kills. It, like, I don't know. I just feel, it doesn't feel the same. Like, back in Modern for 2, and you would get those cooked grenade kills and shit. It felt so good. It, like I feel like they, I don't know. There's just not many cooked grenade spots like there used to be and stuff. Like you know how you could used to be able to go in private match, and fucking find that fucking one spot that you could cook a grenade and get an easy kill on search and shit. Yeah, it would always land. On it the just ball, doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Like blank, that shit doesn't work anymore. Uh, the, I fucking it, capture the flag back in like bo two. Holy fuck, I, I remember watching stadiums. With the a timer and X Defiant, I feel like you can pull off some crazy cook spots, bro. Mm-hmm. Like they brought it back. Like the way the like the way nades used to be and how like they hit. Nade when you get hit with the nade, it hits. Yeah. 
and I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll have a character that will be able to like do some kind of defense for grenades and stuff like that. You know oh, what I mean? They didn't show they didn't show all they didn't no, show all, all their the characters. Domes. All the domes. All the ones with the domes. If the grenade doesn't go inside of the domes, they don't get the fire. Um, shield, same thing. So yeah, no, there's definitely defenses on them. A hundred percent. Um, but yeah, the grenades did feel nice. I definitely note that they stopped that with the new gods. Kind of sucks. They'll probably have to get rid of the fucking see-through walls one, <laughs> or like mm-hmm. nerf it hella, it because it because if everyone ran it, it was literally like fucking mm-hmm. wall hacks. Yeah, they started off with limiting the number of people to use it, and then they just completely removed it altogether. <laughs> I was like, damn. Well, because it gave your whole team wall hacks. <laughs> well, that's what it was supposed to do, but like they didn't expect. That bad, I guess. I, don't, I think they probably did. They just wanted to see if what our opinion was. And then they yeah, it was just too, it was just too strong. The whole version of it, the one with the pistol, because they started off, they removed off the uh, ability to ping. Then it was just you could only use the gun, and then the gun got to the point where it was blue. Dude, really? And people were saying invisible, no matter what. It was supposed to be after you fired, your invisibility went away. And it was fucked up, but it didn't work that way. It just kept you in prison. And then fucking, so they just removed the character and the faction all together from the fucking game. Right. But, um, yeah, I don't see that being in rank. There's no way. That would be so fucking overpowered and wouldn't make sense. I see it in pub stop lobbies, sure. But I don't see that other one in rank. The same as like the no, I I could I could see it in rank if if they nerfed it or like made it so like it'd be like a quick one highlight and then that Mm -hmm. then you you know instead of constant like if it was just one quick highlight. Yeah, one one maybe two or three not hang for ten fifteen seconds. Like if they like, because there's ways to use that ability and not make it too overpowered. You know what I mean? Just a quick second, you can move real quick in the game and get it around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it'll give you a general idea of where the team is. You know what I mean? So I could see like being a really good for comp. Yeah. It'd be like you know. It's being nerfed. Yeah, because it was set yeah. up. And I ain't even gonna lie. Like we had a few people doing that. We had it set up. We had a few people. Like we were running a few. Uh, I think we had like four almost always. But like three people would pick that. And then try to loop it. Like you use yours, and he uses, and he uses his. That way, it was right. always paying, and that's kind of what they were running into. It's like, or you know, or like so two wrong. people popping it on like separate sides of the map, so they're getting a big wide yeah. range of like the whole the whole map split up. I didn't get to that. I yeah, or their whole spawn, that. or their whole spawn. Dude, I didn't think about where they're that. spawning at. Yeah. Shit. Because it had like a range, so if you were just standing away from that range and had like a whole three step, uh, play, like when I played solo, when I went and played solo, I feel like I had a better interaction with the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something we said. Uh, me playing in Canada might have been a contribution to why I had a higher ping when I first started. Because like when I first started playing, my ping was kind of high, and then when I went to play by myself, my ping got cut in like a third of that. But I was playing with fucking Jake, and like I'm on the west coast. And he's in fucking Canada on the East Coast. Right. So, right. you know, catch that server. Where the fuck's that thing at, you know? Well, I watched a video. Uh, someone, one of the FaZe guys, I think, made a video. And he's basically said that he tried all the servers, UK and everything. And he, he basically said that the game played pretty good for it. Like, you know, being at 250 ping and shit. Yeah, I mean, he it said, still played pretty good. But it was, I was just saying, it's probably a contributor to why my... Oh, absolutely. Time. I mean, in a, any FPS shooter game, I think having a slight disadvantage in connection always matters. Yeah. Like well, someone, someone reason, running on five or six at ping compared to for someone yeah. at like a 200 ping, that six ping is going to win. Yeah. If you give me six ping and put me up against anyone, I don't care who they are, and they have 200 ping, there's no way I'm losing. Right. I'm not going to say that's why I got like on a, I'm just saying on a full on assault a rifle. higher ping. So yeah, no, servers, I agree. When I played by myself, I had a better experience because my ping was lower. Just in general, it was lower. And then, like, my ping was higher when I played with parties because it had to centralize the server between all of us. And that shit right. didn't seem to be a factor. Not to say, like I said, it's the reason why I got fucking pooped on or any reason to say why the game didn't act right. It was just something I noticed at connectivity. And it's always, I always look at it as if you see it or if you're told it, you're gonna fucking perceive it. 
So like if you get told by one kid, Rick Beard is playing with somebody, and every time he dies, he's all, this goddamn game, they rig it, it's this, it's that. He might not believe it, you're like, this kid's crazy. How the fuck was that not Six months later, after hearing that guy say this, you're going to kind of start wondering yourself. So like if you look at your ping and your ping's high, you're going to start thinking it's your ping. Right. So, Absolutely. The whole, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it's like the placebo effect. If you see your pings high and you're getting pooped on, you're going to assume that's why. Even though you're doing better than you did in a goddamn lobby two games ago when your ping was actually lower. So, like, that's something in me that I pay attention to. And I noticed when I played by myself, it was easy for the game to find me a good server. So, like, if you pick up parties, just try to keep your party season for the game to find me a good server. So, like, if you pick up parties, just try to keep your party somewhat central to your side. Especially if you got a bunch of people playing, and you got people from well, all over the place. I think what I think what it is too is that uh, when we all play, we all play the same class, so we're not getting the full like <clears throat> spectrum of the game because in this game, like having a different class actually matters and stuff. You know what I mean? Having someone have a shield and shit in this game, and you know what I mean? Like I don't know. I feel like your abilities and everything that what you like, it's just like Valorant kind of in a way. Like where if you don't have a certain kind of team put together and you put all, all duelists in a game, your all duelist isn't going to be able to compete with a team that has, you know, a Sentinel and, you know, every piece of the puzzle they need. Correct. You know what I mean? Because they can help each other out with their abilities and stuff where when we, when you all, when everyone runs the same ability, it kind of counteracts and fucking you can only have like one way like you're basically the, the relying on yourself to get out of a situation instead of someone like throwing a shield down to help you out yeah. you know what i mean no 100 percent makes sense and that's something that we talked about too when we were playing we were like we need people with a shield i raised the shield and that was towards the end when we started registering that the shield was kind of helpful i myself i felt dirty using it but i used to not like anymore oh I, I started using it like I a motherfucker know. dude i was hiding behind that shield and sniping <laughs> they can't kill me and I was getting killed bro. from across the map and I didn't even get to see where you killed me from you're damn right I'm sitting behind that shield till you fuck me fuck this after a while doc you get you get willing and it's not like desperate or really even willing to do anything oh, it's God. a matter of like they're using these tactics to play the game because it is part of the fucking game it's part of the game I can't yeah. stand on someone who cries about something like that's a part of the game mm -hmm. like no, I get if you're it's, legit, it's a part of the game like, and it's intended if you're to be used sitting there you got your teammates sitting in front of you and they're waiting to throw the next one when that goes down and you got a guy behind him lobbing stuns and he okay you, you might got a point but if you throw that well, damn thing in a doorway and if you could here, do the same thing though in a competitive door, aspect, and you I mean, look through that doorway and you start clapping teammates, like I do not fucking feel bad about that. I only start to get a little guilty feeling or like feeling like what you're doing is a little over the top or fucking extra when I start seeing you like put sentries. Well, that's in what I'm saying. Spawn, if everything was balanced, you got four people out here trapping kids in a corner, and then like even then, I mean, I guess it depends on how big the feed is. If you do all that shit, you get a five on. All right, bro, come on. I mean, GGs, but like, damn. I mean, if dog. you're that good at the game, it can control it. I mean, that's the whole point, right? That Fair. be competitive and Fair. and win. And, and like I say, you know, I mean, I get respect on on all, all of it, to be honest. But that's the only time I start to feel guilty, or I start to see, and I'm like, damn, dog, that's that's a whole lot of extra shit for for so so simple. Because if they yeah, had the same, like, if you played against people who were, like, if you did that to someone else, but they can easily do that to you as well. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's fair. Yeah. But it just comes and, down and to skill, you know, skill issues me, or skill gap. I would you know feel what I mean? the same way. I would be a little fucked up about it. I don't mind when you run into somebody who's just casually using the shit in the game. But now when you run into people that are, like, just waiting to throw the next shield, dude stunning you to keep you away from it, other guys running... That's when I get irritable about it, which I'm not to say you're wrong. You're playing the game how it's meant to play it, and you're right. I can fuck off. I could suck it up. You're damn right, for sure. So, like, I get it all the way around. That's when I start to feel guilty, you know? But then That's there's other aspects to say, like, like they maybe, oh like, God. those abilities are maybe too overpowered, and, you know, then it's a little bit of an unfairness because of the, Should you know what I mean? Balance. But mm -hmm. it, like, I think it all comes down to balance. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. like, the whole, like, the key to the game. 
Yeah, because I great. cannot stand how Call of Duty fucking does their CDL bullshit now. Only one AR you can use for fucking competitive. Like what? Ooh, Out of the fucking bad. thirty ARs you give us for the game, you can only let us use one AR. I remember. It's just. I remember in Black Ops Two they limited some of the guns, like they pulled the FAM. Made sense. It was well, yeah. I get it because everyone had modded out. controllers that fucking would mm -hmm. turn that shit into a faster machine gun. Yeah, I, I get it if you pull out a few things. You know what I'm saying? But to go right. to the extent like what they did this year, guy, yeah, I 100 percent agree. You pull out the but pub stomping. There should be really there should be specific, specific guns meant for pub stomping, like specific guns meant for fucking just destroying pubs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And those should be taken out of rank. Yeah, rank should be even. Like you should have like if you're using an AR and you're using a sub, if I have the range, I should be able to beat you with the AR. You know what I mean? Nine times out of ten. But if we're close range, you should be able to beat me with that sub nine times out of ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, that's like that's what it comes down to. I feel like, and that's what I can't stand about Call of Duty because Call of Duty, you fucking make ARs, some machine guns now, and you make pistols fucking better than all the SMGs. Do you think they're gonna bring in more attachments for each weapon? And do you? Oh like yeah, the for I, I think of only being able to pick like four fucking attachments, four or five, or four attachments. I think. I think they'll bring in a couple more. Like they'll keep the way it is right now, mm -hmm. but I think they'll add more to the attachments not and i don't think nothing crazy but i think they'll add like a, a few more attachments I, I, nothing I crazy i think they'll add more shit. like i don't think they're gonna go crazy like call of duty and have like a million but Make i think they'll they, for every weapon yeah mm -hmm. yeah pretty much oh, One, so you could pretty much build that. whatever kind of weapon you want but it isn't to be simplified it's simplified yeah i like the way they did it too i felt limited but it was nice because it made me pick what pick and choose what I want. It didn't make me feel. Like I think it should be limited because if it's not limited, shit. then you can create literally fucking monster and every like Call of Duty basically. Call of Duty lets you pretty much do whatever you want, and it literally gives you the ability to make any gun insane. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it, it kept you from making one broken fucking gun. That, and that then that it, that, all that does is just create a meta. Mm -hmm. I want a game that like where fucking every gun has a fair chance if played properly. Right. If I'm in a if I'm like fucking nose to nose with an SMG and I have a shotgun, I should win that fight. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? But if I'm using an SMG and I'm in close range against an AR, the AR should lose that fight. Like they shouldn't get lucky and be like, "Oh, I got him." You know what I mean? Unless unless they unless they fucking add headshots and stuff in and you got a yeah, headshot more warrior more who could pull out the AR and headshot yeah. someone, you know what I mean? Or SMG headshot, you know what I mean? Like if you were a headshot warrior and you could... Well, the thing is, is what you guys are completely forgetting about. You have kids that literally all they do is just practice aiming. Uh, and I then know. they practice aiming, practice aiming, practice aiming, practice aiming, practice aiming. And they get so good at it, it literally replicates like an aimbot almost. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's literally what I've done yeah, when I, I first got my PC. That's literally all I did. I think it's going to have a good launch. I think marketing wise, they would be very smart to place it around Gulf War and COD tediously. Pay very close attention to how they place it, especially because you you already fucking poked the bear and said COD killer. So you know Microsoft's sitting up there somewhere oh, with probably twenty to thirty k. That the second this game drops, they're gonna shit into the market to go market above this game and try to bury this game. So they have to be careful about how they do it. I argue to myself, maybe if Gulf War does something that people don't like, X Defiance going to benefit. Or if they wait to post this shit till March 31st of 2025 instead, then what they'll do is basically right now, how ready are you for, are you for another COD? How ready are you, are you for X Defiant? How ready do you think you'll be next year when Gulf War already runs its course and you're in the Dude, same what place? The fucking split spawn is this? So I think, I think they've got market <laughs> sides on both sides because they did, they did have the investor call where they mentioned Q4 uh, of this year, and then they also mentioned they wanted to try to get it of March 31st of this year, which clearly they missed the March 31st deadline. They got a beta test out to appease investors, so now they're talking Q4 this year or maybe March of next year. And that's where it's like, I don't, you don't know. It's all speculation. They haven't nailed anything down. Yeah, you know, nothing sets so them. If they know. wanted to, they could just scrap the whole thing. You never know. They sure can. And if investors pull their fucking money, they will. They for sure will. 
If investors get to a point where Gulf War comes out and just bust records, and investors are like, yeah, no, nah, this ain't going to happen, then they're going to drop launch this motherfucker as is, and hopefully it does something. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what we got was what we are getting. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, indie developer studios right now are running on fucking bells and whistles, bro. I know right now, personally, I've seen games being developed by, like, nobody. Power World was made by four kids, or four people, uh, one of which was a 15-year-old at a gas station. So, Mm -hmm. like, let's get real for a minute. Developing a game isn't fucking that goddamn crazy, and it does not require that much fucking institution. And that's, like, what pirate software pushes. It's about education. The Unreal I think creating a game a that, go, that game sticks is hard. Where application that you can download from Epic Games at any point and start learning to develop immediately. Because realistically, how many games actually stuck around develop for years? Part, getting it to market, all that shit. And X you know what I mean? Check that off. But a lot, a lot of, of games, games do pretty decent at launch. Oh, like, you know I mean? like, like you said. Um, the Pokemon game, whatever, like the copycat of you, know, World? you just, yeah, Power World. Yeah, it's, it did great in numbers and stuff, but that game's eventually gonna fall off, and you know it's not gonna be a, you know what I mean? Yeah, a p- top played game. Yeah, there'll be a period where it's gonna get old. I think. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I think you, creating a right game now, that there's stays only around. Thirteen people watching in that category. Straight up. Not even bullshit. Sure. Let's go to Pokemon. Oh, everything, okay. everything that Riot has There's made. Eight hundred and twenty-four people watching people play on their fucking phone. Pokemon Go. There's three times as many people currently watching people play a game on their phone than there are I can watching t- I can people play Power World. Everything that. Riot has You're made right. has literally stuck around and it's had no, has had nothing but longevity. Right. Every single one of their games. Every single one of their games. They have not published one game that has not hit. Mm-hmm. Like all aces, like literally every single game they posted. Right. Yeah. Fair and they enough. don't even post their anal- and they don't even post their analytics for you to like. It's just like Steam does. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like so, you don't really even know what the real player count is for those games, but you would still know they're so over. They're so populated as shit. Like League of Legends, yeah. Valorant. Like you know Fucking they're super insane. popular. You can go to Twitch right now and see that they're like the top streamed mm-hmm. games and stuff. You know what I mean? With yeah. the biggest uh, create uh, creators or streamers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a possibility for that. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think what a bad thing would be is if it came out was a shit game and there was no, nothing ever happened with it. I do know I think Riot is making a, a MMO RPG and they make that I will be dabbling into that. Yeah. Because Yeah, this is like a lot I said, of games. Riot, Riot, I Riot doesn't make anything but bangers. What we're going to find is at the end of this AI blip at the end of all this fucking program and all these things that just got available for free, people are realizing people are running through all these cool games, all these amazing things are happening. All these games are coming out two, three months later, they're not played again. You know, we're going to have a drought in like probably a year or two where every game that comes out is going to be shit. We just every had that. Every game's going to be... <laughs> we're still, I, know, I think we're still going through that. I don't think so. I mean, you might be right. I see where you... like. I can see that you seeing angles from where you're at like i seen power world fucking valheim elden ring dragon's dogma goddamn i know i'm missing some all right yeah like, okay yeah they might have got some good numbers and stuff but they haven't games? got they haven't got like game breaking numbers no like, because you know what they mean? fell off because after two three months people were playing well, what that's happens what I'm talking when there about. isn't another game that comes out that could ever supersede that dude this host is some like what happens when we go ten years and there's just nothing more? Because all these games, right? They pretty much there's always more themselves, right? There's always more. They'll continue just making newer versions, like like they've but what they happened found between it. Bo two and pretty much like I don't know what's the Call of Duty became Call of Duty the trans- next... they, they but... copied Fortnite. Yeah, but what was the best game from Black Ops two till now? What game competes with Black Ops two? What do you think? I'm, I'm honestly like, asking. 2019 and World War II were pretty fun. Yeah, I'm on for 2019. 2019. 2019 was the last fun. Yeah, we're the last. Hey, when did, yeah, when I did think. BO2 come out? 2014 or 13? Like, there's a, there's a good gap of years right there. 2012. So, seven years of COD re- fucking releases. 
that just didn't fucking break ground. Never broke. They never all did. They all did good. They kept it, like they still made games. Yeah, but three months just... after, they were all sitting where power. Like what? Is. I think you see what after I mean? Black Ops Two, Ghost came out. I think right. Yeah, yeah. Ghost was shit all over. Jesus Christ, I loved Ghost. Ghost was so fun. I liked Ghost. I liked Ghost. I hated on it so much. It fucking disappointed. But it, it was not even close to a top tier Call of Duty. Right. And every release yeah. until about 2019 was that way. And that's what I think. The see the thing. That, okay, so the, okay. Because a so. The way I, I, you kind of got to look at it as like in a movie in the movie aspects mm -hmm. when you're watching movies they they remake you know they have one two and three four so you know if they can get the four you yeah, know what i mean yeah no shit but like the so, second remake they're usually dead in the water if it ain't fucking good right <sighs> But then you got like other ones, like say Spider Man. Yeah, they had one, two, and three, but then they had one, two, and then they had one, two, and three, now four. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got kind of, it's kind of like Call of Duty. Like looking at Spider Man as a movie is kind of like Call of Duty. It's, you know, it's that it already has the funds. So pumping out games for it, it's already, it's already there. They already have the funds for it. It's already, you know, in development every year. They're, uh, the problem is with Call of Duty is that they don't, they don't wow. listen. They don't yeah. listen to what the community wants. They're they too just investor driven now. They never really listen to the community. Yeah, they're too caught up. Ever in ever since fucking like I remember Black Ops One, like like everyone like had a complaint about the FAMAS and how overpowered it was, and they didn't fucking change oh, that until like the suck. end of the game. Yeah. After they were already making a new one, <laughs> Mine for three. Yeah, and then same thing with that game, and like it, it's just always the whole point of Call of Duty is that like they would it's just been about money. Yeah, through that, it's, like I said, they've been fucking, no and everyone just gives it to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the same thing with Fortnite. Fortnite has been nothing but about microtransactions. Like that's the only thing they've ever sold you. They didn't. They said it's a free game. Come play, mm -hmm. but then they show you a fucking all. They're partnered with fucking every big company, every fucking big like fucking like Marvel and fucking mm -hmm. Star Wars. You know, like everything Disney. Like, um, but no, uh, I genuinely think that like us meeting up and doing some dumb content would be actually really fun to watch. Just to be honest with you, hundred percent. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I always you know, think I'm, I'm any kind of content that you do like IRL Instagram content is always entertaining, bullet. especially if done the right way. No, no one's going to respond to what I said. No, Fine, okay, you. damn. I'm just, I'm just going to go over and sit in my butt. corner and. I got no problem. Nobody puts a baby in a corner. Right. Yeah, I was going to uh, grab yeah. Never's big old juicy butt and. Yeah. Jack, clip that. Yeah, clip that for sure. 17 people clip it. <laughs> oh, down, down. You scared him away. <laughs> you said you scared him away. <laughs> That's funny shit. But yeah, no, we definitely need to get some shit together so we can all try to get together. I think events would be huge as well if we could That's set events? up for a. Yeah, like Twitch cons. Fucking. Uh, oh, events. The... I thought you said fence. I'm like, what the hell is a fence? Yeah, no, you ain't ever laid fence? I mean, I haven't. I'm not liking it. We all get together, put up a fence. <laughs> no. Events. Like, when we have, like, a COD League tournament, try to get everybody scheduled, like, six months to a year in advance, start working that down. That way, like, people okay. like me, I would have to get a ticket. Or, like, anybody that's on the East Coast but not the same <laughs> state can plan to get a ticket. Once I become the next Aiden Ross, I got you. You're not planning to get a... Dude, plane tickets are cheap. Deadass. ass. So if you look around, you would find out you could travel the world for like a thousand dollars. People think they're expensive. It's fucking not. It's just expensive My time is to coming. take that time off to leave. That's what's fucking hard. And that's why I'm saying if it's an event, it's way more reasonable to tell your family you're gonna go fucking see the cod league and meet the boys and fucking do this thing. No, you got it all like, wrong. Oh, no, nah, man, we're going to go hang out at the mall, and I'm f fucking flying across country for that. <laughs> and I'm going to suck his dick. Yeah, like, you better be. It'd make me feel better about the $400 fucking plane ticket. <laughs> Once we become the next fucking Aiden Ross and Kai and all them, dude, we, it's, yeah. it's in there. Ain't even like that, but you, it, I'll, I'll leave it there because it's not very fun fucking availing ideals on that. But there's ways to get that shit appeased anyways. 